Canon has finally dropped a major update for the R1, and it's called firmware version 1.12. And it's a big deal. Let's take a look. If you check it out here on the Canon's website, uh, there are just a few fixes from the briefly released 1.1 version, and then 27 different fixes or updates to the camera. Now, firmware updates are a really funny thing with a camera company because they don't always tell you what they're fixing. It's kind of like if you went to the car mechanic and took it in and said, hey, my car, I wish it was running a little bit better. And they're like, okay, okay, we'll take care of it. And when you came back the next day and paid them the whatever price it cost, you could ask them, well, what did you do to the car? What, what exactly did you fix? And they came back and said, well, we just made it better. And that's kind of what the camera companies do with these firmware updates. They're very, they don't give you very much information. They don't like to highlight what was maybe not working very well. And they say, well, there's some general fixes. And I think we have some fixes like that in this firmware update. Let's look at a few of the things that I think are really important. Now, there's a bunch of things in here that are important, but, but there are three main things I want to talk about for sports photography. First of all, let's go down to number 13. And it, Canon has added the ability to set the number of shots captured in pre-continuous shooting mode. That's a big deal because I love pre-continuous shooting. It allows you, you to take, it, it allows the camera to pre-buffer images before you hit the shutter button. So if you have a baseball player swinging and hits the ball and you are slightly late, it still captures that in the buffer. The problem with the previous implementation was that it was way too many images. You couldn't control the amount of images that it took. And I think it was like 25 or so images were taken before the actual image uh, taken when you push the shutter button. And it just got overwhelming. It, it was too many photos to deal with. And I think for that reason, I haven't used pre-capture enough. Now you can actually set anywhere from the number uh, from 20 images down to one single image as your pre-capture buffer. And that's perfect because it changes what I need changes from sport to sport. In baseball, I might want 10 images. In football, I may want just five. The ability to set that is exactly what we've been asking for. The other feature I'd like to talk about is number six, panning assist. And it, uh, when users pan with compatible lenses, image stabilization and sub subject blur correction are applied during the exposure. And if you've ever shot panning shots, that's a big deal. Uh, obviously, image stabilization is something they've had, but to add blur correction to the image during the exposure, that's huge. And I'm going to test that out next week at our fall football camp. But the real headline for sports photographers is number seven. I think this is a really cool feature. Adds the ability to select spe case special to expand servo autofocus characteristics, which is an effective for subjects located behind the net in sporting events, such as badminton or volleyball. Essentially, if you're shooting sports through the net, this will improve the autofocus acquisition and tracking of the image. Um, I think this is great because, you know, anybody that's shot volleyball knows how hard it is to shoot through that. And so much of what you shoot, blocking, passing, hitting, is shot through the net when you're shooting straight on. Anything that Canon can do to make this a better experience for photographers, it's well worth it. I think we should test this. So the case special autofocus mode is what I really want to test. I think that's one that's going to affect us the most. Now, I don't have a volleyball match today, but I do have a studio, and we're going to try this out. So here we have Abby, who's a former gymnast, wearing a football uniform, standing in front of a lacrosse net to pretend she's behind a volleyball net playing volleyball. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to first of all do a test of on manual mode, and I'm just going to be tracking her as she's moving around. Okay, go ahead, Abby, move around. And we just see that it's tracking pretty good, but this is on kind of traditional. I think especially when her hands come in front of her face, you kind of see when she turns a little sideways, it jumps to the full body and it loses the face. But that's, you know, that's kind of what we've been used to with the net. So let's try and switch to the special mode now. We're at the special mode. I don't know what else to call it. That sounds wrong somehow. All right, we're in special mode. Here we go. Same thing. Come on, get into it, Abby. Turn sideways, block your face with your hand. Oh, don't trip. Okay, jump, block your face, look down. That does pretty good. I, I mean, I feel slightly better. It feels like it doesn't jump off of her eye very much. Um, but honestly, I think what we need to do is we need to go try it in the real world. All right, so luckily there's a sports camp here today, so we can test this out in more of a real environment. Even the game lights are on. So let's go ahead and start by testing manual mode, normal manual mode.
see that jump foreground there. Okay, let's switch now. To special mode. That's really nice as he goes near the tape. You can see it still stays with him. See that? That's pretty good. Let's get a little jump here. Oh, good. Look at that sequence real quick. Yeah, it stayed with him for a bit and then it jumped foreground. And again, that's one of those things with the cameras I wish we could do is we could control that stickiness or limit how far for focus it would go because it, I, I really don't want that to happen. That's really nice. That's tracking him really well. See how it's staying on his eye. Anytime his eye's in the frame, it's staying on him. Really smooth. Really, I'm really impressed with how smooth it is. Let's do a few more. This is, you know, an imperfect test, but I'll tell you, it does feel like it's just a bit snappier. We need to go take a look at the images though. After shooting some tests in the studio and then going to the volleyball arena and shooting some tests, I'm really not sure what to think because there's not much of a difference between uh, having this case special turned on and off. What I really noticed was that it did a great job either way. Even when I wasn't using the special autofocus mode for nets, it felt better than the previous firmware. So I took my other R1 into the studio to shoot some side-by-side -side comparisons with the new firmware and the old firmware. All right, so here's an example of a sequence from the R1 with the old firmware. You can see Abby's in here jumping, and we're zoomed in quite a bit on this. Uh, as she jumps and her arms slightly obscure her face, you can see how the, the focus starts jumping and grabs onto the net, and then it's just off of her completely, and it stays on the net. It's still on the net, still on the net, still on the net, still on the net, still on the net and then it starts jumping back to her, and then it gets back to her eye about there. All right, so here's an example of my Canon R1 with the new firmware installed. Very similar sequence, Abby's jumping. You see it stays pretty good on her face. All of the arms are blocking, but look at the eyes. It stays with the eyes. And now that she's blinking, it's still still with her, still with her, still with her, and does just a better job of tracking her through that whole sequence. And in comparing the two firmwares, that's what I noticed, that the new firmware is just more consistent in shooting through the net. Which leads me to think maybe there's a lot of autofocus adjustments that have happened with this new firmware that we don't really know about. So I suspect the real story of this new firmware is not the features that they've added, but the improvements that they've made in the overall experience with the camera. I need to test that out though. So I'm gonna to try to take both of these cameras and shoot football, volleyball and soccer over the next few weeks to see if I can really pinpoint what it has improved with this firmware. But otherwise, I've been super happy so far with this update. I think there's some really promising things. I, I think it's a signal that Canon is listening to the users and we should let them know uh, things that we're experiencing or if we have a great idea, we should send that information to them so they can look into to making those improvements. So that's it for today. Now, if you have any questions about the new firmware or things you'd like us to test out, please let us know in the comments below. 
otherwise. We'll see you on the sidelines.